welcome to five days of Buddha bowls as promised. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to do this every day this week. And, um, so in my post, I did mention, I do have small amounts of good quality meats. And I, you know, I do suggest that for many clients, everyone has individual needs, right? And, um, it's really hard to beat that bioavailable nutrition that is in all of the good. I'm not talking about crappy meats the things that are actually bad for the environment, right? There's no question. Intentionally raised cattle is not good for the environment. So that's not the kind of meats, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about your wild caught fish. I'm talking about your not just grass fed, but really this regenerative farming is, is up and coming. Is it everywhere? Not really. I always suggest people get their meats as local as possible. Um, but we're not talking about meats right now. Buddha bowl time. So Buddha bowl. So what is a Buddha bowl? this so you could see me. <laughs> Morning. Um, so a Buddha bowl is going to be a vegan bowl. So that means it is dairy free. And of course there is no meat in the bowl. Then you get to play around and do, I think you can get so creative with these. Where the vegetarian and the vegan diets go wrong is that they are, have been hijacked by the processed food industry. And, um, like when you look at my post and you see all the ingredients that are in these burgers and things, so I'm not, I'm, I'm looking at this one thing, but really I'm talking about the, the entire industry itself and to create flavor profiles that are mimicking things like dairy and beef and chicken and fish and all of those other things, we can run into trouble. And these foods at the same time are very hyper palatable and highly addictive about this in the post, but I just want to talk about Buddha bowls right now. So every day I'm going to do a different one. And just to kind of inspire you guys and show you how to put together balanced bowls. So that means good balance of macronutrients and then also getting some of the vitamins and minerals that you want to be getting through the day as well. Watch what's going on over there. So my Buddha bowls always involve some type of fresh vegetables. Obviously that's going to be the base of the Buddha bowl. Some, and then a few pantry items too. So that could be like some kind of raw nuts or seeds or like a good raw cracker or something in there. And then something, maybe a prepared food like a hummus or a guacamole, um, maybe a handful of olives. You can really get creative with this stuff and it does not have to take a long time. But this, I'm just gonna put these, these are just some purple and regular um, potatoes from the farmer's market, throwing them in the oven at a high temp. I like to do maybe like a 400 degree oven with some av little avocado oil, maybe some ghee, good sea salt. And then this is gonna be um, a good portion, sort of like the carbohydrate, the starchier portion of the bootable but then some kind of leafy green, something cruciferous, or maybe like a um, little bit of a, I, I do like to cook my greens down. So like a, maybe a little bit of a kale, or I think I have some Swiss chard in there. I will probably add some onions to the potato and then another little couple things on the side. So you can, so, so much fun. Vegetables, often I refer to as backdrop foods. I think of things like tofu, right, and stuff as backdrop foods, meaning they're gonna take on the flavor of whatever you put on them, right? And so I like to mix up the salt. Salt, I think, really can be therapeutic, right? We're thinking about food as medicine. So everything you eat can really contribute to the overall health of the meal. So this is a local salt company. So like, you know, check around and see what you have in your in your area um, when it comes to all foods, really. But this one is so cute. You can get them at the farmer's market, so support your local, um, businesses Think about this one is it also has a bunch of different like it's got the garlic the um the thyme chili pepper all all those things so then i don't have to add anything else to it and that's what it looks like so i'm adding a generous amount of that for my potatoes and i'm going to put these in a 400 degree oven probably about a good half an hour maybe 40 minutes putting together the finishing touches on this little buddha bowl so this is just some asparagus i like to start asparagus just like blanched in the boiling water quick just to kind of start the the process only for a couple of minutes, just because you want it. You just want to it really just um, help save time. And then you put a little bit of whatever, like maybe a little olive oil in there is good, especially once the heat is turned off and you can kind of just like drizzle in there and maybe saute for another couple of minutes on like a lower heat. And then I have my asparagus, my purple and regular old potatoes that were roasted. And then um, some bell pepper, some micro greens. These are just from the farmer's market. I think you can put any kind of like just a, a good green salad greens, a little bit of romaine if you want. And then here, this is just a little cashew cream cheese, just for a little hint of extra protein. And then I'm just going to layer on top some of my little cherry tomatoes and then olive oil and apple cider vinegar will go on top.
welcome to another day of bootables. So I have the oven set to 400 degrees. This is a large sweet potato. I have just kind of cut lots and lots of slits in here with a knife and I am going to just roast this baby in the oven for a while. So this is something you can do, you're working, you got laundry in, you've got stuff to do at home. Um, this is a, a really great base for a Buddha bowl. Then I'm going to do, I think like a sort of like a curry one today. This is my little cheat for today. Every Buddha bowl can have a cheat, you know, meaning, you know, maybe like a little bit of a prepared food. This is the ingredients. Where are we? Right there. Avocado oil. Really nice to have in there. Um, I think coconut um, milk would be also a nice addition to this and maybe a nice green on the side. We'll see what we can come up with. Perfect idea. We are gonna do mashed collies on the bottom. So there's a nice cruciferous base we're gonna do. So that's gonna just be spread out all on the bottom. Then we're gonna just warm these guys up, put them on the side. Sweet potato is still in the oven. This is gonna take at least about an hour or so. That's a big old sweet potato. So that I'm gonna just cut probably that in like probably a third of that. And we'll see if we need anything else. Boiling this until it gets a little bit softer. And then I'm gonna mash this with my stick blender. And here's where, so for full vegan, you can do whatever kind of vegan butter you use. Just make sure it's a clean butter. You could do coconut oil. Actually, coconut oil would be nice because it's gonna go well with kind of our curry theme. And, or even a little bit of olive oil if you want. If you don't have something like this on hand, you can just do regular chickpeas. Just make sure that they're rinsed and soaked really well. You can toss it with a little bit of coconut oil and maybe sprinkle with some curry powder, right? Don't, you don't, it doesn't have to be fancy. This I just like, like, I think it's nice sometimes to have some of these things on hand to go with all the homemade stuff that you're doing. Here's my mashed collies. So I added a little bit of grass-fed butter. Again, you can do a vegan butter of choice if you want. You're gonna need a little something. Um, you can even do like, so a lot of people will add like a milk or something to this. If we're gonna go dairy-free, you can go ahead and just add even just a touch of water or a little bit of the vegetable broth just to, just to kind of help it out a little bit to get that consistency that you want. Some people like it a little more chunky in here. I like it a little smoother. And then we're gonna spread that on the bottom with our beautiful sweet potato. Go full on bootable, you gotta do the nutritional yeast. Such a nice little, it's kind of like you're adding dairy or Parmesan cheese just to give it that savory flavor. And I like this brand for that. Of course, do not forget to add your salt. Got going on so far, everything is laid out. I ladled a little bit of um, this with a spoon. You actually, this is so flavorful. You can add, and it's pretty high in sodium. Um, even though it's sea salt, it's got tons of flavor. So you can actually even add extra chickpeas to this and just to kind of cut that sauce down a little bit, totally fine to do, All right? Just little ways, little ways to adjust. And I, this needed something green, so I added just a little bit of broccoli here. Maybe I'll even do some kind of something with the, um, uh, this is really just so it looks pretty, um, but I love getting all the colors. The more color, the more nutrition, remember? Talking about vegan vegetarian meals, oftentimes we're missing some of that. So we wanna make sure we color up the plate as best we can. So we have, we are doing some Mediterranean Buddha bowls. Now, before you're like, what on earth is that? It is not oatmeal, it's actually quinoa. I like my grains kind of sticky like this, so I use extra liquid. You could do bone broth, but of course, vegetarian, you could do vegetable broth. Going to serve as our complete protein and the base for the bowl. Now, I did not use any soy, if you notice, in any of these Buddha bowls, because I don't think it's necessary. I do like tempeh. Remember, all the benefits that have been studied in soy have been in fermented soy, so miso tempeh. You can do the whole edamame. That's gonna be the base. Now I have, remember we talked about doing some of our fresh stuff and then some pantry items. So I have some local organic to, uh, cherry tomatoes, avocado I can slice up. I have a handful of olives, just some mixed olives, any kinds you want. I've got the roasted garlic. Ah! I have now pantry items. How about some artichoke? How about some gorgeous artichoke hearts? These are in olive oil. Always look at what kind of oils they're packing these things in. These are prepared. So I just took them out of a glass jar. The uh, jar gets stored in the fridge. And this, now this again, this can be a prepared food or you can make this yourself. Today I'm using this. Hummus is very tricky. It is one of the most heavily contaminated um, crops with uh, chickpeas with glyphosate. So we wanna always go organic. 
Is it gonna remove all of it? No, but it's gonna be definitely better than the regular conventional version. So definitely look for the organic sign. And then make sure you can pronounce all the ingredients. This is just a, um, this one doesn't have oil, but whatever. Ingredients are pretty good over here. So it's a lot of, lot of garlic and lemon, red pepper in this one. So I'm gonna do about a, a heaping tablespoon of this on top. So more note here on the quinoa. So big rules for grains. We wanna soak them for a long time, rinse them really well, cook them really well. Comes time to pick our liquid, like we talked about the bone broth and the vegetable broth. If you were doing, let's say a curry, you can do full fat coconut milk and that's like a whole other experience. So quinoa and really any green, I think they serve as great, what I call backdrop foods. So it's gonna take on the flavor of whatever you cook it with or spices you use, for example. Now one might say, is it necessary to add all that garlic? And my answer would be yes. And um, of course you can mix this up. I'm gonna do drizzle this with some good olive oil and some fresh lemon juice. It's, he probably really doesn't need much addition because you're gonna get some oils and all good flavors coming in. So you actually probably don't even need the olive oil now that I'm thinking of it, but a nice little hit of fresh lemon juice would be amazing here. So here, let's talk about nutrition. You're getting vitamin C, a complete protein. You're getting tons of healthy fats. You're getting potassium. Like just the garlic alone. Now, keep in mind, we roasted this garlic, so it's not gonna have the benefits that you would you would have if you were gonna be chewing raw garlic. <laughs> but I'm not sure, you can add a few raw cloves if you want. Um, but still, this is, I mean, such a nice bowl, nutritionally. Buddha bowls. So these are again the dairy-free vegan bowls. I'm here to show you that you can use real food to create a vegan lifestyle if you if you're already a vegan. You don't have to be a vegan to eat a Buddha bowl. Just to be clear about this, I am not a vegan. Eat these all the time. It's great to mix things up. So we're on day two or whenever I decide to post this one. So I thought, why not do a fruit one? Fruit is, I like triple my fruit consumption in the summer. I don't do a ton of it in the winter. I have here some papaya and dragon fruit. Now these two are not the most common fruits encourage you to think out of the box because they're all providing different nutrition. This is basically a digestive enzyme and vitamins and minerals and fiber all in one. Um, again, vitamin C, you've got your, you've got your berries, low glycemic index. I have a paleo vegan granola. So this is a coconut oil base or I'm, yeah, coconut oil based granola with lots of nuts and seeds and then a coconut based um, yogurt. Paya and the dragon fruit, by the way, were both at the local grocery store. Like I did not have to go to Whole Foods or anything like that to get it. So definitely look around for those. And um, what else do I wanna say about this? And it's providing, so again, it's not vegetables, but this would be, this is a Buddha bowl. It's a smoothie bowl or whatever whatever you wanna call it. But um, but this, this can be great. And um, the kids might even split this, like even for like after they eat tonight, you could do it for as a breakfast bowl. You could do it just kind of like bits and pieces through the day as a snack. And um, yeah, totally nutritionally sound. Welcome to another day of Buddha bowls. Um, got some gorgeous Swiss chard here for my green for today. In my little pot, I am actually gonna make uh, for my grain some millet. Nice little gluten-free grain. You could do quinoa too for that complete protein. Um, I like to mix it up. You can even do half millet, half quinoa. This is just soaking in some water. I like to soak this for several hours or sometimes overnight even. And then I have this is gonna be my bone. Now, this is a bone broth that is with chicken. So you would omit this, of course, if you wanna go completely vegetarian, vegan, you can do um, just a regular vegetable broth, right? Wanna be clear, anytime I use bone broth, you can sub out for a vegetable broth. This one I like because it does have a mushroom in it. Or it's organic if you can, if you're gonna do just straight vegetable. So that's just defrosting in here. I'll go ahead and add just some regular mushrooms as well. And I'm gonna saute this all down. And yeah, and then that's gonna be my green. Here we go with building the millet bowl. 
Um, so the millet is over here. It's pretty much done. That's what it looks like. It's really delicious with that mushroom. And again, you can do any kind of broth you want, but this one is a little mushroom infusion in there. And here's more mushrooms. Of course, if you don't like mushrooms, just omit them. You could do onions. You could do like a pepper, anything else, right? Don't, don't feel like committed to every single thing that I'm doing. Lots of questions coming up and lots of, lots of great comments on that tahini greens with the hemp seeds and stuff that I've made several times. So let's do that one. The ingredients that you're going to need are tahini. Um, this is as much as I have left. I don't have a time enough. That'll probably be maybe almost a tablespoon. And, but I could just do a mini version. So you want probably about between one and two tablespoons of tahini, just raw tahini, about a tablespoon of maple syrup. This is also running out. So this is perfect. Um, we'll sprinkle hemp seeds at the end. That's going to be a couple of tablespoons and coconut aminos, right? So these are the ingredients in addition to the mushrooms and the greens. My greens, they've been washed and cut pretty small because I like greens pretty small. And I'm just gonna cook all of this down and add all the ingredients one by one. Probably add them right before the greens go in. All are, they're the ingredients. The only thing I didn't add yet are the hemp seeds. And I'm gonna just start cooking down the greens in this sauce. And I'm not gonna do it super high heat, pretty much like medium to low heat. These cook down pretty fast. And then at the end, we sprinkle the hemp seeds and then we build the bowl. Perfect. And the only ingredient that I don't have here is the fresh orange zest. I like to zest it at the very end. And I'm just gonna go ahead and turn off the heat. It's gonna continue to cook for another minute or so. And yeah, we're good to go that we have so far there's our millet there's our greens combo the greens is going to take up a lot of the plate and now like i said before we're going to talk about what we're going to use from the pantry and prepared foods to add so i got these are just beans um this is cannellini black and uh, kidney in there been rinsed rinsed and soaked thoroughly and i'm going to put a couple tablespoons of those and then probably something fermented there's our beans and so Everything that's on this plate so far has been very savory, right? So we want to cut that a little bit from a flavor profile standpoint, and we are going to do kimchi. We're going to do about, I usually do about two tablespoons of this. That's going to hit that little slot right there. Now you are looking at probiotic, magnesium, calcium, iron, fiber, great amount of healthy fat in here. You've got a complete protein, right? From the mushrooms alone, selenium, vitamin D, B6, this this is an example of a complete vegan meal. Maybe even add like a little bit of nuts and seeds here um, just to really push that mineral um, and um, omega-3 profile over the edge so that like maybe just a handful of walnuts or something just to get those omega-3s. Um, you are actually getting some from the hemp. I totally forgot about that. So um, yeah, you want to be taking algae supplements if, um, if you're not eating the fish and the, the cod liver oils and things like that.